So before beginning any ankle arthroscopy, it's very important to mark out the anatomy. Initially, when the patient comes into the operating room, I will mark out the superficial perineal nerve by doing a plantar flexion inversion mechanism, showing and highlighting the superficial perineal nerve, which typically separates approximately 6.5 centimeters from the base of the fibula. Then I'll mark out the anatomy once the ankle is in distraction by marking out the fibula, as well as the medial malleolus and the anterior medial portion of the malleolus up into the tibial plafond, followed by the tibialis anterior. These are important landmarks when establishing ankle arthroscopy portals, as your tibialis anterior landmark will help guide you for your anterior medial portal, and we want to avoid any injury to the superficial perineal nerve when establishing our anterior lateral portal. An SPN nerve injury is one of the most common complications from ankle arthroscopy, and it will be very important and critical to not only mark it out, it also avoid it during any sort of surgical approach. So as we begin our ankle arthroscopy, we'll initially begin by palpating our tibialis anterior. We can feel it as it's in now a little bit of tension right along the anterior medial portion of the ankle. I'll initially begin my arthroscopy by palpating the joint with the 22 gauge needle along the medial border of the tibialis anterior. I'll use my thumb to sweep the tibialis anterior out of the way as I begin palpating at the joint, initially beginning at the distal tip of the malleolus. And so as we get in to the ankle, I like to palpate up a little bit further until I find where the tibial plafond is, and then I'll work my way backwards until I'm in the joint. And now I can sweep and really feel good excursion both above and below with my needle. I'll then insufflate using approximately 10 cc's of normal saline before getting into the joint. So once I've found my portal placement for the anterior medial portal, I'll create a crosshatch to help identify where the site of the anterior medial portal is. As I pull the needle back now, that will be the site for my incision of the anterior medial portal. So I'll pull the needle out. I'll then utilize my thumb to pull the tibialis anterior laterally as I pop into the joint with my knife. So once we've made our anterior medial portal, we'll then take our 11 degree high flow nanoscope cannula and enter into the joint. And then we slide our nanoscope in, which has been previously white balanced, and we feel that click. So now we're in, and open up the flow. So we've now entered the ankle joint here, and as we can see, beautiful anatomy with the tibio Taylor joint and using our 11 degree high flow cannula, we can maneuver into the joint, having excellent access to both the medial gutter, and then now as we enter the front of the ankle joint as well, we can go across here and allow into the posterior lateral and view both superiorly and inferiorly very nicely. I'll oftentimes create a third portal, posterior lateral portal for both inflow or outflow as well, and have a third working portal. At this time, we'll create an outflow portal using a second needle, which we will create with the idea in mind that we're out of harm's way for the superficial perineal nerve. As we make our portal, it's important to really identify your trajectory of what you'll be accessing. If you're interested in treating an osteochondral lesion, you're going to want to make sure you can reach that with your needle as well as have access to the lateral gutter and have the excursion you need to reach posteriorly as well as anteriorly. So we'll pull the needle out here and it's important then to use the mosquito or snap next and I'll make my incision very superficially here and then use the mosquito to do a s spread technique when you do a nick and spread to really kind of sweep the SPN out of the way. So then I'll take my obturator next to then create a pathway into the ankle joint. 
And it's important to use the blunt obturator in this case to avoid injury to the articular cartilage. So then once we have our portal here, we can then start by inserting our probe next to identify any pathology. So here we have our nano reusable probe, which is a two millimeter tip and allows you to palpate both the soft tissue as well as the cartilage and evaluate any chondral pathology. So now let's discuss how to hold the instrument. I like to hold it in a few different ways depending on what you're using it for. But as you get comfortable using the nanoscope, I recommend initially beginning to rest your fifth finger on the ankle to avoid pissing in and out of the ankle joint. Let's discuss a case here where you have some mild chondromalacia of the Taylor dome. So treating this would involve debriding it and doing a chondroplasty as well as removing any sort of loose debris in the ankle joint. A good option for treating the chondromalacia and doing the chondroplasty is the SJ50, which is now available in a shorter working length at 110 millimeters with a smaller diameter than the MP50 at 3.3 millimeters in 50 degree curve. This allows for a lower default setting and aspiration to keep the fluid temperature in the joint low. So now we're gonna bring our SJ50 probe into the ankle joint. It's already on the low setting, which comes as a default. I'll initially begin by using the ablate setting on level three to avoid any sort of chondrocyte damage. And that allows you to really debride the injury nicely there. And then go to the coag setting to really fine tune and be very precise with your chondroplasty. It's important to keep the probe at a 90 degree perpendicular angle to really fine tune your debridement. So one thing that you can utilize the coag feature for is increasing it to the two setting to get a little more aggressive on your debridement, switch onto the one setting to better fine tune your debridement. So now let's discuss treatment of an osteochondral defect using the nano arthroscopy instrumentation. So as we approach the Taylor dome here, we see an osteochondral defect of the medial Taylor dome highlighted by our probe here. We can see that it goes full thickness. And this is something that we'd want to treat arthroscopically utilizing both a graft net harvesting technique as well as biocartilage, which we refer to as autocart. So new instrumentation is now available for nanoarthroscopy using different osteochondral defect prepping tools, such as the nano cup curette, which you can see here, as well as the 15 degree nano scope ring curette, which you can see here, as well as the 30 degree nano pick, which you can see here. Another benefit of this system is the reusable bending tool. This allows you to take your nano scope instrumentation and bend it as desired to achieve a different working angle. So you'll check to see that it's fully seated and the desired angle will be when you turn your instrument facing up and you can either bend it slowly further away, or if you want more of a bend, you can grip closer and get more of a bend. And now you can have your desired angle as shown here. So when treating a osteochondral defect of the talus, I strongly believe in employing the autocart technique. And in doing so, you'll initially begin by attaching your graft net harvesting tool to the back of your shaver. So now we'll utilize our nano saber shaver with an 11 centimeter working length and begin by harvesting our osteochondral defect, which has a graft net attached to the back of our shaver, which allows for excellent cell viability as we've seen in numerous studies. So as we harvest our articular cartilage here, and then I like to go back and forth utilizing both my cup curette, my ring curette, to really have nice margins and having a sharp 
wall around the rim of your articular chondral defect. So once you have really excised your osteochondral defect in the Taylor dome, and you get rid of the injured cartilage, go back and forth using the shaver. Another option when treating osteochondral defects of the talus is utilizing the 15 degree ring curette. One of the beautiful things about this curette is that because it is a single use curette, it has extraordinarily sharp edges to the ring curette, which allows you to harvest and treat the osteochondral defect with very sharp edges and borders. And once you've done so, you can then insert your shaver back in, which has the graft net attached to it, to further take up the remaining part of the autologous chondrocytes. So once you've harvested the osteochondral defect and debrided the osteochondral defect from the talus, I'll then go to my back table and mix the graft net harvested osteochondral autograft with your biocartilage, which is your extracellular matrix, and then mix that with my concentrated platelet-rich plasma from the bone marrow aspirate or platelet-rich plasma. In this setting, you have both the cell, the signal, and the scaffold allowing you to create a beautiful auto cart repair and reconstruction technique. So as we discussed, utilizing the reusable bending instrument, we're able to bend the distal tip of our nano ring curette or our nano cup curette in this case to better address and treat the chondral pathology. So entering the ankle now, we can really have the angle we want to achieve the sharp borders that we desire, which allows us to create a better healing environment for the osteochondral defect. And we get down to the bone here, and we want to really just do a nice abrasion of the calcified cartilage layer there. So we get down to the bottom of the lesion, and using our angled cup curette, allows us to get the sharp borders you want, as well as really do a nice abrasion arthroplasty of that calcified cartilage layer to create a better healing environment for our osteochondral defect that we'll be treating with autocart. So as we prepare our autocart treatment, it'll be important to have a dry joint. Coming in the biocartilage kit is our different instrumentation to help dry the joint out. And occasionally I'll add a suction tip to the end of our swab to help speed the suction of the fluid out and obtain a dry joint. As we get ready to introduce our auto cart, it's important to have everything prepared on your back table. And this would include having either a lap sponge or a Raytec to dab your camera, as well as having your autologous glue or your fibrin glue ready to go in rapid fashion. We can also, in this case, utilize our nano elevator is a way to flatten your osteochondral defect. We're now going to get ready to introduce our auto cart into the ankle and I like to place it into the ankle joint and have all your instruments ready to go. And so you can see your auto cart laid down nicely and then I'll place it where the lesion is and have my assistant gently introduce the cartilage. That's good. Stop. And then I'll take my either freer elevator. So in this case, we have our nano elevator to help function as a way to flatten out our osteochondral defect here that we're treating with the auto cart. As we now have a nice introduction of our auto cart to treat our osteochondral defect of the talus, at this point we'll then introduce either our autologous thrombin or our fibrin glue.